Hello and welcome back to Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. My name is Jin, and if you're new to the series, I suggest starting off at episode 1, where we begin building our mine colony in modern Minecraft Better Minecraft. But if you're not new to the series, welcome back, let's jump in. Now a big thank you first off to my Patreons, and all of you dudes that are subscribed on YouTube. I went and took a look around the uh, Patreon server recently, and there's some pretty funky stuff that you guys have been doing. It was pretty cool, I checked out some builds, and we also took on the Nether Dragon, so stay tuned for that video coming shortly. Now, last episode we got the Builder's Hut to level 3, which is kind of huge. It means we can now upgrade to a maximum level of 3 for all of our buildings. It doesn't mean we're going to, though, because getting to level 3 on a lot of these buildings takes a lot of resources, and since everything is level 2 at the moment, it's a bit more important that we get some more basic buildings down. And that's why this episode, we're going to be focusing on production. That's right, the three main production buildings of our colony. So like I said, what we're going to try and nail this episode are the three main production buildings of the colony. Those are the mine. There it is, a mine. Do we have the materials? I hope so. Yeah, oh, we got enough for two. We need a forester. There we go, Forester's Hut. And last but not least, we need a farm. Okay, now let's get the build tool out of the computer and find a place to put these down. So why are these three buildings so important for our colony? Well, basically, they are the best way to get the three main materials we need here. We need the farm to get basic crops so we can feed our colonists, very important. We need a mine so we can get things like stone and precious ores. And we need a forester's hut so we can get the wood we need to keep on building. Because when you think about it, these buildings are really just a big old mixture of wood and stone. Now there's a lot of new areas in our colony that we have access to, and I feel like the area I want to designate as our resource production zone is this area down here, underneath old Strawfinger's cage. Now there is a massive area here of open free land, and I think this is going to be the perfect spot to put down something like a farm. A farm needs lots of flat land because it needs lots of fields around it, so I think this is the perfect spot for one of those. But before we get cracking on that, it's time to chop down all of these trees and create a huge clearing. So we're armed with a pack full of fresh axes, ready to chop down this orchard. Oh, but let's take a look and see who's in the tavern. We've got Sheev Bond. How do you do, Mr. Bond? Smiley Darkness. <laughs> That's quite the contradiction. Tilly Heisenberg. Amir Palatine. And uh, never did add that S, did we? Oh, so one interesting thing that you guys said in the comment section is that when you look at a citizen's stats, you see their hunger bar here. When the hunger bar gets all the way to the bottom, that's when they leave the tavern. And that's good to know going forwards if there's anybody we really want to keep, but we can't afford to purchase in the moment. So who else is hanging around? What's this guy over here? Let's have a look see. Jonah Holmes. Okay, case solved. So anyway, yeah, let's clear out some space because our builders need something to build. Chippity chop, whoa. Oh no, I hate it when an axe breaks mid-tree. Now, yes, we are clearing out a lot of these trees, and it's making the area look a little bit more ugly, but don't worry, once you've got these buildings down, we're going to come back and replant most of these saplings that we're getting to keep the area looking nice and fresh. Now, let's grab this little bit of wood here, if we can get to it. Oh, perfect. Man, so real life has been very hectic for me lately, because recently I got a puppy. Oh, man, I was very looking forward to having a dog in the house. It's been amazing. She is a blessing and charming. However, she is a lot of work, and I've spent most of my days recently just staring at a dog, making sure she doesn't poo. When she does poo, picking her up and taking her outside, taking her outside and realizing she doesn't need to poo, coming back in and watching her poo in the middle of the living room. And, oh man, puppies test your patience, uh, but with hard work and perseverance, she'll get through her training and learn to poo outside. But until then, oh man, she is a blessing and a nightmare. Oh man, one great thing as well, we're getting loads and loads of apples from this. Maybe we should make some toffee apples. Oh man! I remember as a kid, uh, thinking I loved toffee apples because, oh my god. 
and then realizing once the toffee was gone, it was just an apple, and then apples were disgusting. Um, yeah, I've since learned from my mistake, and yeah. Oh man, <laughs> oh, those last little islands of trees. Always a menace, but they have to be dealt with. I wonder, if I just dig a nerd pole up here, is the game going to think it's a tree? And let me chop it all down. Oh wow, yeah, life hack. So if you ever need to get a top of a tree down with this mod pack, build up a column of logs and then re-chop the tree down again. Works like a charm. So there you go, looks like a nice big clearing for us to work with and put down our farm. So we're going to need a couple of things here, not just the farm, but also the farm fields. Luckily enough, generic fields come with the build tools decorations. So let's take a look, a right click down here and we get farmer, that's the first one. Medieval oak is the first kind of building. It's not a small building, we're gonna need a lot of space for this. Luckily enough though, we have loads and loads. This looks like a fairly decent spot. We'll level it up to level five, see where the front is. Oh wow, look at this, this is amazing. It's even got a windmill. We could probably turn that into a create windmill as well. That'd be pretty fun. Now, there's probably a medieval oak alternative, so let's see what that looks like. Oh uh, yeah, it's always so weird. I'm not quite sure, but the alternative buildings often aren't really made with oak. This one's got loads and loads of bricks. Why is that? I mean, it looks okay though. It's very small compared to the other one, which is why I think they're in here. The alternative ones are often very compact. But the regular medieval oak level five looks much, much better. So I think that's what we're gonna go for. Oh yeah, look at this, beautiful. Plus it also comes with space for one field included, amazing. So a quick check to make sure it doesn't overlap the courier's hut, and I think this is the perfect spot. So we're gonna pull the trigger on this bad boy and see what happens. And let's quickly set a builder to get working straight away. Wait, where is the, there it is. And we're gonna put Alyssa on this one and have Bilbo do the fields. There we go, Alyssa started work on the builder's hut and she's gonna come along here and get things going. Now while she's doing that, it's time to get the build tool out and put down some decorations in the form of farmer's fields. So we scroll down until we find fields. Here we go. And we want fields wooden, I guess. Basic field. Fancy field, large field. So the basic field is smaller. The fancy field, well, I guess it just looks fancy. It's also got something going on underneath. Oh, it's got redstone attached to a lamp, which is attached to, wait, that's it. It's just a, it's just a, a lit up field. Okay. And a large field, which I think is the maximum size a field can be. And again, since we're planning for the future here, I think we want to do the large fields. And that looks perfect. Set the builder to Bilbo, and off we go. Boom. Now there's a lot of other blocks to clear out for Alyssa, so what we're gonna do is give her a hand and also give her some more tools. So first let's clear out all of this grass, and this is a really big help for our builder because what happens is when they clear out the grass, their inventories get filled up with all of these things like cucumbers, rhubarb, all of that trash. And when a builder's inventory is full, they can't work. So we need to make sure we're on that. Also, this is weird, but Alyssa is nowhere to be seen. Bilbo is hard at work digging and chopping, but I don't see Alyssa anywhere. So I think maybe she is missing the tools she needs. Yeah, oh, it's Queen Big Lips. <laughs> nice. Should we get her on the colony? Why not? What is it? Four cakes. I think I can afford that actually. I think I've got four cakes. Oh my God, literally four cakes. I just found four cakes. Old Queen Big Lips. Welcome to the colony. I should have looked at her stats. They're not that great, but whatever. Welcome to the colony. Maybe you can be a guard. So what we're looking at now is a way to get tools that we make here quickly over to the warehouse without having to worry about ferreting over things ourselves. And that's why we're going to make a mailbox. Or rather, it's a post box. Here we go. Or is it a post box? No, I think it's a drop box. It's some kind of box. What kind of box is it? 
Here it is, a stash. So we should have the items to make this, perfect. And if we put this by our door here, what we can do is fill this up with gear, like axes for one, and as soon as something's in here, the courier, like it says, will come and pick this up and then put it in the warehouse. And this is a great way for us to just basically take anything we think we our builders might need, like a stack of dark oak logs, some oak stairs, strip oak logs, definitely some oak logs and some dirt. There he goes. Put these in the stash and then the courier will come over, pick them up and take them straight to the warehouse. And that's really great news. It means it's going to make things much easier getting things to our colonists to build with. And certainly the slate shingles come into that category. But also, most importantly, iron tools we can put in here as well and he'll ferret them to the builders. And in you go, those will get picked up shortly. So the stash is complete, the courier is coming over to take stuff to the warehouse. Let's go and check on the builders and see how they're going. Has Alyssa started work yet? No. What I'm suspecting will happen is she will get the tool and then she will commence work. But let's go and see if we can find her and find out exactly what her problem is. Because at the moment, she's not down here by the field and she is also not... in the Builder's Hut. Trevor's here. Is she underground? Can you guys see her anywhere? On the map, I... Oh, there we go, on the map. Oh, on the map, she's over here. Where is she? On the map, she's right where we are. Is she underground? What does her resource scroll say? Alyssa requires... Ah, uh, these bits and bobs, okay. So basically we need to get, I think, the area that we have is clear enough for her to start work. We just need to get the bits and bobs she needs. Okay, no sweats. So we'll need hay, so it's time to clear out our wheat field. Oh man, adding auto-click to my mouse macros was the best thing I've ever done. Look how quickly we're getting this wheat. Beautiful. Beautiful wheat. Enough for a million hay bales. So now we need to make the fields block itself, and it kind of looks like a scarecrow. If you type in field, here we go. Oh man, looks like an orange version of straw fingers. Maybe straw fingers if he'd been to Barbados. Oh, we also need leather. Do we have that? I'm fairly sure we do. We'll need a couple of these fields. We'll make three for good measure. Perfect, everything these two rude dudes need to get to work, except... The oak wood. Now remind me, how do we make oak wood? It's like not like a normal log. It's a special version of a log. That's right, it's four oak logs make one oak wood. And I believe that's everything that these builders need to get started. So let's go and deliver the goods. We could use the stash to drop these off, but the courier is already very pressed as far as work goes. So we want to kind of do these ourselves just to speed things up. Dig, dig, chop, chop, required resources. And yeah, good to go. She's used none, though, which means she hasn't even started work. Where is she? Where is old Alyssa? Oh, no, she has started work. Oh, there you are. You cheeky little scamp. She's been up a tree all this time. Oh, that does look ugly, though. We're going to have to remove that tree at some point. But it looks like she's almost ready to get started. She's got a few more leaves to take care of, and then she can get started on the main build. But I do think Bilbo is going to be finished with his build very, very quickly. So now we need to start thinking about our next resource building. We're going to have the fields all around here, near the farm where it's flat. But what about the lumberjack? Where are we going to put him? We want to save this space here by the water for a potential fisherman's hut. But, yeah, the lumberjack is a very important building because that's how we're going to get renewable sources of wood. So what about right next to the farm here? Well, why not? Because then we can watch them both being built at the same time because we have two builders. Yeah, let's get on it. Wow, and there we go. He's finished building the large field already. Fantastic job. No time lapse on that because, well, it would have lasted about two seconds. Good job, Bilbo. So level one, two, three, four, five. Not super impressive, but you know what? That's a pretty good looking lumberjack. I like it. It's a very small building, but that's fine. 
So what's the alternative like? Ah, so this is Medieval Oak Lumberjack Alternative, and you know what? I'm kind of digging this building. It looks a bit like, well, it's got two huts going on. It's much bigger, much cooler looking, kind of. Now, I think we're going to choose a normal one and not alternative because the level five building just looks so much prettier. So let's maneuver it around into place. It's kind of good to place buildings in their level five mode because then you can properly see what they'll look like eventually. And we'll move it closer to the farm as well to make it more space efficient. So let's get going. Raise it up a bit, maybe. Ooh, no, we'll keep it at that level. And uh, yeah, pull the trigger. Now let's watch these rude dudes go to town on these buildings. So the level one farm comes with space for one farm already, but a farm can work as many fields as it has levels. So when we get the farm to level two, that will unlock the ability to use this next farm. Now we've kind of got enough wheat growing near our house. The main two crops we're gonna need from this farm are gonna be potatoes and carrots, mostly because they're very important when it comes to curing colonists of influenza. And we're definitely gonna get another outbreak of that at some point, so we're gonna need a hospital too. Oh man, that was one of the quickest builds I've ever seen, and I should have known actually. The whole build is basically just a few logs, a few bits of fence, some hay bales, and just some wooden bits and bobs. Man, and the, the lumberjack hut? Even less. It's like some sticks and some slabs. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to kick it into second gear and go straight up to level two buildings on the forester's hut and the farm. Let's do it. Boom. Build options. Where is that? Here we go. Level two. And as you can see, the requirements are a bit... Well, what? No, they're hardly anything at all. Coarse dirt is going to be the only tricky thing. Even grass I have shears for, so we'll set Bilbo to this and say upgrade. Boom. Boots with the fur. Oh, really? Oh, there we go. 50,000 blocks traveled. Maximum level on the Wanderer's boots and a 1.4 speed boost. That's pretty cool. So where's the farmer block? Is it up here? Yeah, here we go. Farm. Build options, Alyssa, and this building is a little bit trickier. It's got some paper timber frames, but ultimately nothing I can't handle. So let's go and gather what we can. So here we are in the warehouse. Now, what do these guys need? Gravel, hay bales, left hand slope oak. Now it says here left hand slope oak is red. She doesn't have it. However, if we look into the rack, we can see left hand slope oak we actually have loads and loads and loads of this stuff. Uh, as you can see, right, so as soon as the courier actually starts to ferret it over from the warehouse, it tells you that actually we do have it and it's on its way. Amazing stuff. So the oak stairs, they should be a simple one to make. Open my inventory. Go to oak. Take out some logs and make some stairs. What about... Old Bilbo. Ah, now he just needs grass. So let's go and see if we can find some grass. Now again, I have some shears with me. So finding the grass is going to be very simple. Snip, snip, snip. And as quick as a Jewish birth ritual, we have enough grass for him to get going. Yeah, 19. Perfect. Let's go and give him the, uh, the hookup. And again, we're going to put this in the warehouse now so that the couriers have something to do. Because I feel like recently they've been a bit, you know, out of a job. And I don't want these guys to feel like they have poor job security. So we're going to keep them on their toes. All right, well, that's all the materials they should need. The area has been cleared out already because they're level two buildings. Let's go and watch the upgrades take place. So level two has some trickier requirements than level one. But all in all, they are still very, very simple builds. Now Bilbo in the background you can see has almost finished his carpenter's hut, but then he's gone off to his hut and I think he's got a problem. So we're gonna have to go and diagnose that. And they can get all kinds of problems as they're building. You never know, sometimes their inventory is full. They can get gummed up in a number of ways. So Alyssa and Bilbo have returned at last with all the things they need to complete our forester level two and of course our farm level two. And I think that's where we'll stop. 
we do have a Builder's Hut level 3 now, which means we can upgrade to a level 3 Carpenter's Hut and a level 3 farm. But it might require a lot of tricky resources, so we'll check to see what the requirements are before thinking about what we do next. Man, so all in all, two very, very simple level two builds. We've got the farmer's hut set up and we've got the carpenter, not the carpenters, the forester's hut set up. So let's go and see what they require for level three. And this is where things are gonna get spicier, I believe. Racks, dirt, oak campfire, more of the slopes, cauldrons, they could be tricky, 181 oak stairs, polished andesite, and the list goes on and on. These aren't complicated, but um, actually, no, I think we have kind of access to all of these. And now we'll look over at the forester's hut, and what does this require? Yeah, more of the same. Slate shingle slabs, that's quite the tongue twister. Look like they could be a tricky thing. Also rails, flower pots, but in general, these are two very, very simple level three builds. Well, I think I might upgrade these to level three before the next episode, but the most important thing we can do now is get these bad boys actually set up. So let's go and find exactly the right kind of workers for the job. A farmer requires stamina and athletics and bada bing bada boom, it looks like Ben's a Fisher straw fingers has these two stats in spades. So he is an instant and immediate hire for our farm. Now let's go over and take a look at the Forester and see what they need. So a Forester is a little bit different. They need focus and strength, and at the moment the only colonist who's spare is Queen Big Lips, and her focus and strength, it's okay, but it could be better. Strength is the main one, focus the secondary, so let's go and see if we can find another colonist in the tavern that has a great strength and focus. Princess Parker. Yes, sir. Strength and focus. Strength is five, focus 14. No, that's worse. Who's next? Alba Straw, wow. All of the, why, why is everybody called Straw Fingers appearing on the farm? What is this guy doing? If you say so. And his stats are seven and four. That's worth Dr. Potter. If you say so. 19. On 26, boom, I think it's gonna be Dr. Potter. Let's make sure he's not gonna run out of hunger anytime soon. No, his lamb shanks are way full. So, little bits ass chaps, <laughs> what the hell? Now that is one of my Patreon's names. Oh, but alas, we do not have any honey. Oh, and his strength and focus is pretty good as well. Oh, if only we had some honey. Do we have any honey? Maybe I looted some from somewhere. No, ugh. Well, we will have to get some honey so we can get some of these colonists because it is a common requirement. I can help, I guess. Rob Holmes wants enchanted books, so we're just straight up not gonna buy him, regardless. Well, it looks like it's gonna be Dr. Potter, amazing. So he wanted, what did he want? Come here, Doc, what are your requirements? How has he got in here with the pigs? What are you doing with the pigs? Not, not good enough for oh, amazing nether quartz, which we have loads of. What can I do for you? Boom, there we go. Dr. Potter is in the colony. Now I've been told you have to be very careful when you hire new colonists. There is a small chance that they will take what you offer them to join your colony. So the 28 nether quartz, and they will just run away and not come back. Not good enough for you. Oh my God. This guy's even better. Strength 27, Focus 20, Tarquin DiCaprio. Why didn't I buy you? Sunflowers. Do we have enough room in the colony to get you in? Right away. Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. Tarquin is in the bag as well. Building more houses than available jobs has a bad influence on your citizen's happiness. Okay, ooh. So we've got to be careful. We've got way too many houses at the moment. We need to get some more jobs, which makes building the mine a very important thing as well. So here we go. The forester's hut, manage workers, and the choice is between Dr. Potter, who's 19 and 26, or Tarquin, who's 27 and 20. Boom. I mean, there is no question there, is there? It's going to be Tarquin. 
So now we have the workers, it's time to set up the buildings. We'll do the foresters first because his is the most important. If you don't set up a foresters, what he will do is he will just dig all of the trees that are nearby. And that means, well, there's a lot of trees nearby that we probably don't want him to dig just yet. So what you do is you go down here to selection tools, obtain the selection tool. Wait, what did that, did that just replace one of my tools? Oh no, that's okay. And you set an area. So you right click to set the first position and you left click to select the second. So we'll select the first one here. And the second one up over here. And now everything we put into this zone is going to be the trees that he digs and he won't dig outside of this zone. So if we take a look at saplings, we're going to need some acacia saplings at some point. We'll put one of the, one or two of those down. Well, we'll put one down actually because it's not a common requirement. Birch also. Jungle sapling could come in handy. And of course, spruce. We have loads and loads of oak though. Dark oak could be good. And so basically, yeah, if you look on the interface, oh man, what does this guy sound like? What is it? What can I do today? He's got a very gruff voice. <laughs> well, okay. So yeah, basically you can see here that he has a set number of saplings that he will actually dig. Oh my God, he's already digging the wrong tree. No, don't do that. Don't do that, my dude. Zoning mode, here we go, on, boom. So now he should stop working on this and only dig the trees that we told them to. Although now that he started on this tree, he might just keep going with it. So zoning mode is on, replanting is on, and now we just gotta put down the trees in this area that we've selected and hopefully they'll grow and then hopefully he'll dig them. And we'll leave those to grow to see if they work. Now here we go, oh man, so Benza Fisher Strawfingers has already, without us even telling him, begun work on both of these farms. So there are two farms near to him, this one and this one, one and two. So what we wanna do is now assign these fields a crop. We're gonna go into our, our warehouse, get out a carrot. Well, we'll get a few carrots actually, that'll help. And potatoes. There we go, 25 potatoes. So we'll go over to the bigger field, which is gonna be carrots, because I think carrots have a bit more use. Boom. And if you click on the scarecrow, you can set the carrot in the middle and that makes this entire field a carrot field. Then boom, potato in the middle here. And now this one is a potato field. We can give him the remaining carrots and potatoes that we have and he'll plant those. Wait, why has he picked up an egg and a baked? Oh, maybe he's just got that for food, like a snack, like a cheeky oh. egg on the go. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colony. Today we've got our production sorted. We've got a carpet. Oh, look, one of the trees has already been dug. We've got a forester on the go. He's digging the wrong tree at the moment, but he should start digging the right trees shortly. We've also got a farmer in position with two fields down, and that's old Benza Fisher in the background, and he is working hard on our carrots and potatoes. As always, a huge thank you to all of you guys that are YouTube members and Patreons. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and select notifications so that you get notified when the videos come out. I've been Shin, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.